So how does a weight, a ruler, and a stopwatch add up to a device that can measure radioactivity? Hey, everybody. Professor Davis here from chemsurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And I thought we would do another Table Tuesday and continue on, as it is uh, Women's History Month, by looking at another great female chemist who helped to shape the periodic table. This time, we're going to take a look at Marie Curie. And specifically, we're going to ask this question. How is it that Marie Curie was able to measure radioactivity in samples 10 years before the Geiger counter was invented? It's a great question. How exactly did they do that? And it's an important question because it was the relative radioactivities of ores and purified substances that allowed Marie Curie to come to the realization that new radioactive elements were hiding in the ores that she was studying and ultimately led to the discovery of two new elements on the periodic table, polonium and radium. So let's take a look at how she did it. Now, you may have seen this iconic image of Marie and Pierre Curie hard at work in their lab in the 1890s before. And what Marie is doing here is actually measuring the radioactivity of a sample. So let's get a closer look at what she's up to in this image. Notice that her right hand is poised just above a scientific weight. And that her left hand, if you look closely, is holding a stopwatch. And all the while, she's staring intently at a ruler or a beam of wood suspended above the device. So how does a weight, a ruler, and a stopwatch add up to a device that can measure radioactivity? The Curie method involves a little bit of electrical engineering, if you will. Now, on one side of their device is what's called an ionization chamber, and we'll get back to the ionization chamber in just a moment and how it works. But the ionization chamber itself is wired to a small coil of wire, essentially an electrical motor, that suspends a mirror. And a beam of focused light is then bounced off of that mirror and onto the ruler that she was staring so intently at in the previous image. So this creates a spot of light. Now, at the moment, that spot of light obviously is not moving. On the other side of this device is the weight, which is connected to a blade of a material like quartz, a piezoelectric material. Now, piezoelectric means that this material will produce an electrical potential in response to compression or tension. And of course, right now it's under tension because of the weight. Let's get back to that ionization chamber. When a radioactive sample is placed into the ionization chamber, that ionizing radiation causes the buildup of an electrical potential. And that electrical potential generates a current that turns the motor, that turns the mirror, and ultimately causes the spot of light to move along the ruler. But removal of the weight creates a very specific pulse of electrical potential as well, opposing that current. And so the spot stops for a period of time. However, eventually, the radioactive samples current overcomes this pulse of electrical potential and the spot begins to move again. So what this means is the longer the dot pauses, the weaker the radioactivity of a sample must be. And conversely, the shorter the pause, the stronger it must be. So this gave the Curies a way in the 1890s to measure at least the relative radioactivity of various samples. So how did that take them to discovering two new elements on the periodic table? The key to the realization that new radioactive elements must be hiding in uranium ore was to run the experiment several times. Now, once the experiment was run using something like uranium ore in the ionizing chamber, pitch blend or calcocyte, a material that's known to contain uranium, but also other substances. And then a similar experiment is run using purified uranium that has been enriched. So one would expect that by enriching a radioactive material that you would increase the radioactivity of that sample, and therefore you would have a shorter pause. However, when the Curies ran the experiments on both uranium ore and purified uranium samples, they saw exactly the opposite. That when the weights were removed, of course, the light dots paused for both samples. But interestingly, it was the uranium ore whose dots started moving first. And the uranium metal took a longer period of time to overcome the pulse of electrical potential generated by the removal of the weight. Now, this means that uranium metal must actually be less radioactive than uranium ore. And there was only one really good explanation for this. There must be other materials, yet undiscovered elements in the ore, 
that are even more radioactive than uranium metal. And sure enough, within a few years, Marie Curie was able to isolate two new elements, polonium and radium, which ended up winning her a second Nobel Prize in addition to immortality on the periodic table. Well, that's all for today, everybody. Thanks for watching my talk on the Curie method and how Marie Curie was able to discover polonium and radium 10 years before the invention of the Geiger counter. I'm Professor Davis from chemsurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. See you for the next video.